Hello, I'm Nicholas Maxwell. I'm a philosopher of science at University College London. My latest book is called Is Science Neurotic? In it, I argue that there is an urgent need to bring about a revolution in the aims and methods of academic inquiry. For centuries, the basic aim has been to acquire knowledge. Judged from the standpoint of promoting human welfare, this is damagingly irrational. What we need is a new kind of inquiry devoted to promoting wisdom. Wisdom being the capacity to realize what is of value in life, thus including knowledge, but much else besides. Natural science has been extraordinarily successful in increasing knowledge. This has been of great benefit to humanity. But new knowledge and technological know-how increase our power to act, which, without wisdom, may cause human suffering and death as well as human benefit. In fact, all our current global problems have arisen in this way. Global warming, the lethal character of modern war and terrorism, rapid increase in population, rapid extinction of species, even the AIDS epidemic, AIDS being spread by modern methods of travel. What we urgently need is a new kind of wisdom-seeking inquiry that devotes itself in the first instance to helping us tackle our problems of living, problems of knowledge being secondary. As an example of a new piece of technology of great value leading to all sorts of unforeseen problems, one need only think of the motor car. This is so desirable that everyone wants it. Before very long, mass production makes this possible, and as a result, we have traffic congestion, air pollution, and an appalling number of people killed on the roads every year. In this case, we know what we need to do to solve these problems. Better, cheaper, friendlier public transport, cars banned from cities, and every encouragement for people to take to the bicycle, new fuel, such as hydrogen or electricity, which does not cause pollution, and further safety precautions and traffic slowing measures. But we love our cars, and governments lack the will to push through the unpopular measures required to solve the problems the motor car has created. If we are to create a better world, we need to learn how to do it. That in turn requires that we have traditions and institutions of learning rationally devoted to helping us learn how to do it. It's just this that we don't have at present. We have science devoted to improving knowledge, but not rational inquiry devoted to helping us create a better world. In future programs, I hope to show you what this new kind of inquiry would be like and how it would help us to tackle our problems of living in wiser, more cooperatively rational ways. Um, why don't you tell us a bit about this new book that came upon you while you were in Amsterdam? Just tell us uh, how it all happened. Okay, well, uh, it's been something that's been simmering in my mind for a long time. Um, the, it's called, the title is, at the moment is Einstein, Quantum Theory, and the Great Betrayal. And the idea is really, well, there's this big problem with uh, quantum theory that uh, electrons, photons, behave sometimes as particles, sometimes as waves. And the authors of quantum theory, orthodox quantum theory, the theory that now exists, decided this problem couldn't be solved. It was just too enigmatic, too impossible. So one would have to develop the theory as a theory that, about the results of making measurements. And in that way, you just avoided having to solve the problem. Einstein regarded this as a terrible betrayal because he thought one should solve the problem. One should try to understand. In fact, Einstein invented the problem long ago, a hundred years ago, in 1905, when he published a paper suggesting that light might be also like a particle, even though it's also wave-like. And he thought one should try and understand what it really is, when no one's looking, as it were, and not just have a theory about the results of making measurements. He said, if that's all physics is, it's only fit for shopkeepers and engineers, which has always seemed to me a bit hard on shopkeepers and engineers, but one knows what he means. My idea is that perhaps the problem is uh, that the quantum world is fundamentally probabilistic. 
Quantum theory, in any case, makes probabilistic predictions, so this seems like a good bet. And if it is, then the basic entities of the quantum world are going to be quite unlike anything that we've encountered in classical deterministic physics. So, so the, the question, are they particles or waves, is really the wrong question. The right question is, what kind of unproblematic, fundamentally probabilistic entities are there? And then can we see quantum entities, electrons, photons, uh, protons, and the rest, as some sort of unproblematic, fundamentally probabilistic entity? And, and I think uh, we can. And how will you determine it? Well, if my ideas are right, and they're probably wrong, but if they're right, then it uh, suggests that you have to have a precise specification in quantum mechanical terms when probabilistic transitions occur. And my suggestion for that is that this happens when new particles get created or new bound systems. And that is, in principle, testable. It, it has consequences that differ from the predictions of orthodox quantum theory. But no one's yet done the experiment because no one's thought, seen a need to do the experiment. And it's a very difficult experiment to do. But somebody undoubtedly will come up with well, uh, maybe, uh, you know, if, if this book of mine is a success, um, someone might think of a way of actually doing the experiment. When will the book be ready, do you think? Well, I'm, um, it's, I'm dashing it off at the moment. Uh, I'm deep into Maxwell's equations at the moment. Um, so my idea is to sort of finish it by Christmas, but that may be a bit ambitious. <laughs>